Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern called Applejack. This is one from Basic Gray and it uses a jelly roll. I'm going to change up the colors a little bit. Instead of that gold background, I'm going to use a light background. And for those accents, I'm going to use this bright green. And then for all of these parts, I'm going to use this jelly roll from Moda called In Bloom. I believe this jelly roll has 42 strips in it. And we're going to need 35 for the pattern. And each strip makes an entire section here. So I'll use that, but I will for sure not be using these really light ones because they won't show up against the background. But I think we've got 35 from all of these pieces. And we can always, if we don't have quite 35, you do have the option of taking one of these and using some of your scraps. You could make this from several different greens. It wouldn't have to all be the same one. So let's go ahead and get these pieces cut out. Every strip gets cut out the same, the exact same size. I can't give you those sizes because it's not my pattern. But all of Basic Gray's patterns are very easy to follow. And there's just a few little cuts we need to make here from each strip. Okay, I've got the jelly roll pieces cut the background, the accent, and we're ready to prepare the first sewing step. What we're going to do is take some of these accent squares and we're going to draw a line right across the diagonal and I like to use a light pencil for this. We're just going to put one accent on each of these and they're going to go on opposite corners so half are going to be going like that and half are going to be going on the opposite corner, so they're mirror images. And all we do is line up the edges and sew along the line or just a hair to the side of the line. And what we want is for when we fold it, we fold along that sewing line. We want all of those edges to meet up. And then we're just going to press it, I'll use the iron, and trim off the excess. Once those are all done, we're ready to make our first block. So I'm going to grab one stack of the pieces here, two of each of these, so two lefties and two righties, and then we need four of these squares and four of these rectangles, and we'll take this to the machine. Here's how the pieces are going to be laid out. The big single piece goes in the middle of the block, then the next largest one goes right on the top and bottom of that. Moving along to the next biggest piece goes there and there, and then the smallest piece, top and bottom. The corners, calling these the corners, they're going to go like that and like that so the accents are on the outside of the block. Then we're just going to fill in with these guys. This middle row doesn't have any pieces added to it. These pieces get a little piece added to each end, and then the last pieces get a square added to each end. All we have to do now is make all the rows and sew those rows together. All the seam allowances throughout the whole block will get pressed toward the dark color. All those rows are done. We've just got the very bottom row to do. Thank you. 
all the rows are made, it's super easy to put them together because there's no intersections to match at all. So every row is exactly the same length. And all I'm gonna do is finger press to one side. I'm gonna press them all exactly the same way. And that makes it very easy to iron after we sew the blocks and finger press. And then that first block will be all the way done. There, I'll give it a nice steam pressing, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make up the rest of the blocks. The blocks are all done, and the layout is super simple. All we're gonna to have to do is put every block facing exactly the same way, with a little space between them so we can get the sashing and cornerstones. I'll have to trade the colors around a little bit, but we are going to have five rows up and seven rows across. There. I may trade around the blocks a little bit. I can see that I've got two similar ones right there, but it's fairly balanced. Now, when you have a color that's drastically different, like this one, you might want to put that one in the center and the other one closer to the center, or you might want to do what I'm going to do, which is to put them in the far corners. Either way is fine. It's totally a matter of preference. The next step is to put in the cornerstones and sashing pieces. There's a cornerstone in the middle of each intersection here. And then we've got sashing in two sizes. We've got shorter sashing that is exactly the same size as the blocks. And then we've got longer sashing that is the same length as the blocks. That's the whole quilt laid out. Now it's not necessary for you to lay out every row like this. We're going to make this in rows patchwork, sashing, patchwork, sashing for the whole first row. The next row is going to be the small sashing cornerstones, small sashing cornerstones. So you could just make a bunch of those rows and lay those rows in place. You don't necessarily have to lay the whole quilt out. There are some borders to finish this off. And we've got a narrow border that's going to go on the top and bottom. And then the side border is just a little bit wider. And I think the pattern maker felt that the quilt would be a lot more balanced if we had just a little more width on the side, and I agree. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this stitched up and get it loaded onto the quilting machine. One option for putting your rows together is to just put a pin in it, pin all these pieces so you know you have them in the right order. And I do like to take a picture with my phone of the whole quilt before I start sewing so that I will know that I don't have a row in upside down once the rows are done. Now I often don't pin mine. I just pick up all the big blocks in order, stack them up, put a stack of sashing on my lap, and sew it together that way. But you need to do whatever works best for you. There's not a right or wrong method. There's just the best method for you, the one that makes you feel like you're not going to get them mixed up. The quilt is all loaded up and we need to pick a thread color. I'm going to have to use either white, green, lavender, purple. Any of these will probably look really nice. Now if we go with white, it's going to show quite a bit on those darker things, but doesn't look bad. I like this light green. That doesn't show much in the background and it'll probably blend a little better in the prints. Now this is interesting. This is going to show in the background somewhat. Not a lot. This one again, it'll blend right into the background. We'll blend in there. This would be the most extreme option. You could do this. You could do some flowers. They would show up quite a bit in the light areas. And then I've got this green, which is a little bit darker than the lime there, but blends in really well there. It's going to show some, I think, I think I'm going to go with the green. We do have green as the accent color, and I think that will work the best. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to do one that's flowery because the 
fabric collection is called In Bloom, and this is called Star Flower. And I like how it's pointy. Let me make it a little bigger so you can see it. I really like this part of the leaves. Looks really cool. So that's what we're going to go with. I've got the Applejack quilt all done. This is a really fun quilt to make because as you can see, remember each one of the jelly roll strips made one of these blocks. And I love that there's a whole block in one fabric. It really showcases it well. The little prints, the big prints, and the quilting doesn't show much here. Shows a little bit more. You can see that nice flower in the dark areas. And I think that makes the quilt look good. On the back side, I used this large floral print, and you get a hint of the quilting because I used that light green thread, but it doesn't overwhelm the back there. We've got a nice dark green binding. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now there's something I want to point out. I don't know if you noticed this, but when I made my blocks, I was using a bone colored solid. And then I cut the sashing and the borders at a different time and they're actually a different color. So I noticed it once I started making this sashing that this is white and this is bone. And I thought, you know, it doesn't really bother me, but I just wanna let you guys know, everybody makes mistakes. And if it bothers you, you gotta take it apart and start over with these with the correct color. But if it doesn't, go ahead and leave it. Thank you so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now at the end of each video, we like to do a giveaway. Today, we're giving away a quilt in a pattern called Long Tall. This is a Cozy Quilt Designs pattern, and I did it all with Hoffman Batiks. We have a couple of videos to show you how to make the Long Tall pattern, but today, you can win the quilt. All you have to do is click the link right below this video that says Giveaway, and put in your name and your email address, and you might be the lucky winner. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.